Hello guys, today I want to go over Python iterators. An iterator is an object, let me just highlight this here, that contains a countable number of values. An iterator is an object that can be iterated upon, meaning that, me meaning that you can go through all the items in that object. Technically, Python, in Python, an iterator is an object which implements the iterator protocol. It consists of the methods iter and next. Lists, tuples, dictionaries, and sets are all iterable objects, which makes sense because they are data collection types which can store items that you can go through. You can use the you can use various functions and methods to go through all the items in the list, so they'd count as iterators. They are iterable containers which you can get an iterator from. All these objects have an iter method, which is used to get an iter iterator. And I did not go over the iter method in those videos, but I will go through it in this one. Now let's go over a quick example. This one will be with a tuple. This tuple we have apple, banana, and cherry. And I've created an iterator called my iterator. And it uses the iter keyword and it iterates the tuple that I have. And we will print the iterator by using the next function. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it goes through the items one at a time. So each time the next function, which is also built in, is called in regards to an iterator, it will go through the first item, calling the same function the second time, it will go through the next item, and calling it again will go through the item after that, which in this case is the last item. Now it's important to know that we're not changing the function that's calling the item. It's not like we're going to the tuple and putting in brackets to and putting in one to access banana. Using the same next function means that the iterator remembers which item we call the next function on before, which means so, which means that when we repeat the function, it will automatically select the next item. L let me just go over it this way. We call it the first time, the next function, it will go to the first item in the tuple. When we call the same function again, it remembers the first item was called upon with the next function. So it will go over banana instead, which is the second item. And then we call the same function again, this time there's no argument that's changed, telling it where which item was called before, so normally it should have no idea which items were called before, but because an iterator can internally store the data that was of the next function that was called before, it will call cherry this time. It's also important to know that strings are also iterable objects, so here's an example with a string. So here, here we have our string, it has the characters for banana. I convert the string into an iterable object, and then I use the next function, just like it's implemented here, the iter function to create an iterable object, the next function to call each item in the, iter in the iterator, and starting from the beginning it will return the first character which is b, but then repeating the same function recursively over and over again, it will just go move on to the next character in the string, then the one after that, and the one after that, all the way until all seven items have been printed. So let me go over that. And here we go. Each character in banana has been printed. Now if I comment out some of these lines, that's not what I want to do. Oh, no. And try it again. That. And if I try to run the function now, it only returns the first four of the first three. I think I accidentally deleted one. So I'm just copying this again. So this time I should print the first four characters of our string, and it does. Basically the next function remembers the last character that the next function called, and then it prints the one after that. And we don't have to just use this with the print function, we can use this in any function. So for example, well I'm not going to go over an example right now, I want to keep this video short, but if you were using some other code instead of the print, if you were using some other method instead of the print function, the next function would still remember the last time it was called. Each time you call the next function, it remembers what item it iterated. That's what I'm trying to say, basically. Alright, let's move on. You can also use a for loop with an iterator. So here's an example to iterate the values of a tuple using a for loop. So instead of writing the same function 
so many times, we can just use a for loop to make it simple. It just has to print it once, but it'll go through each item in the tuple. This is basically the same example I went over in my tuples video, but since you now understand what iterators are, this kind of shows how Python does this example under the hood, so to speak. And I can do this with strings as well. So not just tuples, but with any data collection type. Remember, I went over that strings are a form of an array, and arrays are a data type, data collection type. So with any of the data collection types, arrays, tuples, lists, dictionaries, sets. Well, I'm not sure about sets. Well, not, it should work for sets as well. But yeah, for each data collection type, iterators are how it keeps track of what item you're going through under the hood. And it works. Also, to create an object or a class as an iterator, you have to implement the methods iter and next to your object. And this time you will have to use the underscores. I'll go over that in a minute. As you have learned in Python class, and no, we have not. Yeah, I got these notes from uh, W3. Honestly, since my videos have been getting so few views, I'm just gonna keep it quick, copy and paste. And then once I get start getting, once I start making videos about my projects and that I have planned in the future, that's when I'll come up with original content. For now, I just want to get over this quickly. Anyways, all classes have a function called the init function. I went over this before, which allows you to do some initializing. The iter method allows acts similarly. It allows, you, it allows us to initialize our iterator. Honestly, the fact that they call it an iterator and have to repeat it so many times, it's really hard on my uh, speaking abilities. But anyway, this function must always return the iterator object itself. The next method allows you to do operations and it must return the next item in the sequence. So here's an example. Create an iterator that returns the numbers starting with 1, and each sequence will increase it by 1. So it will return 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And let me just uh, copy and paste, because I'm lazy. Alright, let's go over this. Here's our class. I call it my numbers. It has two functions, the iter function, and the next function, these are built-in functions, but we are altering their capabilities in order to return something that we want them to. So now this one takes in self, self.a will be one. So rather than taking from a tuple or a list or a data collection type where the one is located, this time when we call the iter function, it will initialize a one, and then it will return that one. And our next function will take that one, the self.a, and then we'll add 1 to it, and then we'll return the addition of 1. So then I call my class, or rather I initialize my class into a variable called my class, and then I create an iterable object with my class. So my class is being turned into an iterable, iterable object, and then we print it 5 times to get 1 all the way to 5. And it does. The 1 comes from the fact that we use the iter function, the built-in function, and told it to initialize a 1 when it's called upon. And then each time the next function is called upon, it will add 1. But what's unique about this is that we are altering the basic functions in Python. So rather than taking the next function and using it on a tuple or anything, it's not doing any of that. It's doing it on, based on this class without any data collection type to work with. So let me show you an example of how to modify the next function, so let's say we add 3 plus a string hello. I don't think, I'll, I think this is going to give us an error because numbers and strings, integers and strings don't really mix well, but well, let's try it. Nope, gives an error. Let's see. Or let's just add by 3, let's just keep this simple. I could do something complex, but I, I don't want to waste the time. So rather than adding 1, it adds 3 each time. Um, kind of want to add a string. I know we can use the format function, but honestly that's too much work for a simple example. I just hope you guys get the idea. I mean, I've, my videos get very few views on YouTube. I will post these videos on other sites, so it should get more views later on, but for the time being, since this is a basic tutorial, I already figured out how you learn 
basically learned Python on my own, off screen, while I was running these videos, so my last video before this was in February, so from February to now I kind of figured out the gist of Python, so these videos aren't too useful for me anymore. I will finish off the series, but I'm going to move on to projects once this is done. Anyways, the example we created here will continue forever if we have enough next statements. So basically let's just try using the for loop again. So let's just get rid of these. And iter needs a limit. So... We will add this functionality to next. Alright, this uses the built-in keyword stop iteration. It's built into Python. It does take arguments, but without the argument brackets, it'll simply stop the iteration. So we have an if statement. As long as it's less than or equal to 20, it should add 1. However, once it reaches 20, it's going to stop. And it does. And yes, we can modify this too. So now it just adds 4 instead of 1. I'm sorry I didn't give the example with strings, but it's just... I just want to get this over with quickly. I don't want to deal with this too much or too long. It's kind of late at night when I'm recording this. Sorry guys, you're just, you're just going to have to experiment on, on your own at home. Or I may go through this in an example when I'm working on one of my projects that I may end up creating a string with this. But anyways, this is all I wanted to cover for iterators. And the source is from W3 Schools. Um, I think the link will be in the description, or you can just type this in Google and see for yourself. The next video is, uh, in the next video, I want to go over generators, and then after that, I want to go over decorators, properties, and closures, which is going to be probably an hour-long video. Anyways, I hope you guys have had a good one.